Hello and welcome, this is Reddit Oscar. Today I want to talk about Dragonlord Placidisax, the age before the Earth Tree, and the Greater Will's relationship to the dragons and the Golden Order. You see, there's an assumption that I keep seeing among the community and among my own comment sections, where people think that the dragons have their own separate unnamed outer god. Something along the lines of the fell god of the fire giants, or the mother of truth that supports Moog. But I think that's actually not the case. What I think is that the dragons are associated with the Greater Will, and they're associated, or at least they used to be associated, with the Elden Ring. The remembrance of the Dragonlord item description tells us that the Dragonlord, whose seat lies at the heart of the storm beyond time, is said to have been the Elden Lord in the age before the Erd Tree. This tells us a bunch of interesting things. It tells us that the dragons ruled before the Erd Tree was even a thing, and that during this time where the dragons were in charge, there was an Elden Lord, Dragon Lord Placidisax. The term Elden Lord in the game is only ever used in reference to the Elden Ring. If Placidisax was the Elden Lord, that means that at one point he brandished the Elden Ring, which has some cool implications for the timeline. The Elden Star's item description tells us that it is said that long ago the Greater Will sent a golden star bearing a beast into the lands between, which would later become the Elden Ring. What this means is that the Greater Will sends the Elden Beast, the Elden Beast becomes the Elden Ring, and is then brandished by the dragons at some point. And all of this happens before Merica and the Erd Tree and the Golden Order. This idea is further supported by Ferrum's Azula itself. The Azula Beastmen Ashes stayed. Spirits from Beastmen from doomed Ferrum Azula, the slowly crumbling ruins in the sky. These ruins are said to be the remains of a giant mausoleum enshrining an ancient dragon, guarded by chosen beastmen who wield weapons clad in lightning. So clearly, Faramazula is linked to the dragons specifically. And around Faramazula, you can find images of what looks like an Elden Ring, but it's different from the one we know. It is much larger, with many more great runes, and with roots going in all directions. This depiction of the Elden Ring is likely what the Elden Ring looked like during the time of the dragons, during the time in which Placidisax brandished the ring. Another thing that supports this interpretation is the roots that can be seen on this Elden Ring. We know that the Erd Tree didn't exist at this time, this was the age before the Erd Tree. But we also know that before the Erd Tree there was the Great Tree. The Crucible Tree Helm is described as being Great Tree Ornamentation. It then goes on to describe the Crucible of Life as the primordial form of the Erd Tree. I'm assuming that the Great Tree is the primordial form of the Earth Tree. And in that case, take a look at this. This is the symbol for Earth Tree incantations. And this is the symbol for aspects of the Crucible incantations. This symbol is very similar to the Earth Tree incantation symbol, but less refined and with many more roots at the bottom. I believe this symbol is depicting the Great Tree rather than the Earth Tree. And if it is, it would make sense why the Elden Ring has a bunch of roots coming out at the bottom during the time before the Earth Tree, because this is likely a time in which the Great Tree is still there. It still hasn't evolved into the Earth Tree. Now, all of this has implications for what the Greater Will wants, for what the relationship the Greater Will has with the current Elden Lord and the current Order. The Elden Beast Remembrance says that it's a vassal of the Greater Will and a living incarnation of the concept of Order. I think that Order itself is what the Greater Will cares about, and it doesn't care about what form that order takes. The Golden Order is merely the current incarnation of order, just as the dragons were before them. The fingers who serve the Greater Will seem to be perfectly willing to allow new Elden Lords, and in fact even new gods that are vassals to the Elden Ring, to come onto the scene. The demigods Rani, Mikola, and Melania are chosen by the fingers as Empyreans, capable of replacing Merica herself, and it's not the first time they had done something like that. The Glomite Queen who commanded the Godskin Apostles was also an Empyrean chosen by the Fingers, and had the Glomite Queen been successful against Merica and Malekith, I doubt the Fingers or the Greater Will would have cared, because after all, the power of the Glomite Queen herself came from the Rune of Death, which was a part of the Elden Ring. The Greater Will wants order. It wants someone to be the vassal of the Elden Ring, someone to be the Elden Lord to brandish it. I don't think it necessarily cares who. Just as a last bit of evidence, there's also the actions of Radagon of the Golden Order. 
Radagon is described by Merica as the Leo Hound of the Golden Order, Leo meaning loyal, and he's the leader of Golden Order fundamentalism. Radagon cares about the Golden Order. He's devoted to this specific incarnation of order, regardless of the Two Fingers or the Greater Will's designs, which actually puts him at odds with the Two Fingers. After you defeat Morgoth and attempt to enter the Erd Tree to become the next Elden Lord, you find that there are impenetrable thorns blocking your way, and on those thorns is Radigan's symbol, a series of interweaving lines. You know that that's his symbol because it's on the Radigan Scar Seal. So Radigan is the one keeping you out of the Erd Tree, forcing you to burn it down to enter. When you do enter, it is Radigan that tries to fight you off. Radigan is trying to prevent the start of a new age. By keeping you out of the Erd Tree and fighting you once you get in, he is attempting to preserve his current Golden Order. He seems to be trying really hard to not get replaced like Placidus Sax was before him. Alright, that's the end of this video. Let me know if you think I've gotten something wrong or if there's something I might have missed. As always, thank you very much for watching.